my hair decided to do its own thing today and we're just not gonna we're not gonna talk about it hey i'm Cece, and it is time for you to buckle in because we are about to go on a fucking ride um if you have heard of boyfriend to death have seen it have seen my other videos or have played the game you kind of already know what we're going to get into because this is the same creator um if you had not played those games it's time to do some research <laughs> probably look it up. There's trigger warnings on the website boyfriendtodeath.com. It'll show you all the trigger warnings for this. And a just fair warning, if you are under the age of 18, please leave, exit, stage left, um, and then get older. And then once you're 18, come on back and we'll have fun. <laughs> but anyways, I hope you are ready to see me be very uncomfortable and sassy as shit because these men irk me and I let them know it. But that being said, let's get into it. Hmm. This guy looks like Markiplier. I guess let's start left to right. Let's do that. Well, this will be the last time we'll be seeing you. Too bad about the settlement. Already, this girl's a bitch. She's a bitch, and I don't like her. I'm sure you're broken up about it. I shook my ex-husband's lawyer's hand begrudgingly and did my best not to turn my attention to Marcus. I mean, he's like fucking 11 feet tall. It's hard to, like, not. She made it so that he got off not paying me anything. I'm sure she could have done worse, so I didn't push it. He was very quiet, but I could feel him looking at me. Come on, Marcus, let's go. What's that? Is, is this supposed to be hers? Or is this Marcus's? I mean, she's not a character in the main menu. Aria put her hand on my ex-husband's shoulder. She must have looked ridiculous because she's like three foot four and he's like 11 foot nine, so she's probably just like having to reach her hand all the way up to get it on his shoulder. <laughs> she gave it a light pat as she went. For a moment, he just stood there. Marcus's large frame lingered in the doorway, and I was too frightened to lift my gaze. He didn't say a single word, but the silence was suffocating. When I dared to look, he was gone, but I still felt as if the danger hadn't passed yet. I woke up with a jolt and rubbed my forehead, finding it damp with cold sweat. I'd kicked most of the covers off my legs, too. Damn, I hated dreams about Marcus. The look on his face that day was unforgettable. I'm sorry, I got distracted. I thought this was a roller coaster. <laughs> like, damn, what kind of city are we living in? I looked down at the form next to me, gently stirring at my movements. What's wrong, Cece? Hi, John. Hello, John. I don't trust him. I don't trust him. It's, it's, it's the blonde hair, blue eye combination. I have been burned every game by a blonde haired, blue eyed man. I don't trust it. I am not going to believe that he is an exception. And I've got my fucking eye on you, John. John rubbed his eyes. I plopped my head down on his belly and rubbed my face on it. I just had a bad dream. My words muffled by his stomach. He put a large hand on my head and rubbed my hair. He was so warm. His touch always helped soothe me. What happened? What is this? What does this mean? What is, what is all that? John asked as he continued to stroke my head. Uh, let's just be honest. Honesty, best policy. Ah, lame. I'm not surprised though. Don't worry, he's not coming around here anymore. I 
don't trust him. I don't trust him. I feel like he's gonna like get a payout and fucking bring Marcus over here and ruin my goddamn life. John reassured me as he kept his hand on my head. I nodded. I believed him. He always took care of me no matter what I was doing or what was happening. The alarm on the desk started to go off. He reached over and turned off his phone. Sorry I woke you up before your alarm. I crawled on top of him and sat down. He gave my thigh a gentle pat and shook his head. It's totally fine. He sat up and put on his glasses. You can put these little glasses on and look as cute as you want, John. I'm fucking on to you. Can you still drive me to work? I nodded my head. His car was in the shop. I wasn't really sure for what, though. He just came home in a taxi yesterday. That's suspicious as shit. That's suspicious as shit. Why did you just drop your car off and not even, like, say, hey, something weird happened to my car, was making this noise, needed to get it checked out? Suspect number one in my book. He's, he's gonna give me up. I should probably get off of you, huh? I didn't move. Probably. But neither of us moved to get up for a while. I finally rolled off of him and onto the floor. <laughs> Graceful, just like I am in real life. I looked under the bed and saw my cat looking back at me. Ah, oh, hello, Munchie. What are you doing under there? I couldn't lie to myself. Munchie was the best thing that came from the divorce. John hung his legs off the side of the bed. She's probably hunting my socks. John yawned and rubbed his eye. I laughed and got off the floor. Yeah, did you ever find her stash? We continued our conversations in the morning by shouting across the small studio apartment, but it was fun. No? I'm gonna need new socks soon thanks to that little gremlin. John called out as he went into the bathroom. I'm gonna make breakfast though. What, you don't like my cooking anymore? I sat down in front of my computer to check my emails. I don't cook either. Uh, ever. Like if you want a mean spaghetti or like some pretty bomb tacos, that is about the extent of my cooking expertise. You're not gonna get anything else from me. <laughs> I sat down in front of my computer to check my emails. I tucked my feet under my butt and listened to John move into the kitchen. I wasn't going to say anything, but... Ow, you wound me. Just feed Munchie and you can make dinner. I could hear the sizzle of eggs in the kitchen and I let out a soft, contented sigh. Most mornings were like this and it was very relaxing. Sometimes we fought, but it would never really escalate into anything horrible. Define your definition of horrible, though, because... Like, my definition, typically my definition, and this character's definition are two completely different standards. <laughs> I watched as John laid a plate of eggs and toast near me. John kissed my cheek. FYI, I love your cooking. Sure, Jan. He turned on the TV and went to the couch near me. We relaxed and ate breakfast as John watched some Let's Players on the internet. Oh. John wandered away as he got ready for work, and I did the same. I hope he doesn't see this um, and sees me talking shit about him. <laughs> Sorry, John. Ready. He pulled his polo on. Yep, let's go. I got into my car, and I drove him to work. It was mostly an uneventful drive to that university he worked at. Weird, posh place. John stood out pretty badly. When are you going to be done at this school? Should be a couple more weeks. Freelancing means that I don't have to be here long, thank goodness. Yeah, I just don't like those guys. What, you don't like Novu Rish? Ew, don't say it like that. Plus, these people aren't Novu Rish. They're like old Vu Rish. <laughs> down with the bourgeoisie, am I right? Do you even know what you're talking about? No, but buzzwords are fun. <laughs> no, damn it, I don't like him. Have a good day, Cece. I love you. 
John gave me a kiss and waved. Mm. I smiled and waved back. I love you too. I watched him walk into the building. I sighed, already feeling lonely as I pulled out of the parking lot. I looked out the windshield and saw the building pass by me. Maybe I should pick something up for dinner. I don't really know what I wanted to cook. I blinked, hearing something behind me. A siren. Ugh. I swallowed and pulled to the side. I didn't like police officers. Girl. <laughs> Relatable. Ever since the divorce, I couldn't really stand being around them anymore. Now I was in trouble. For what? I rolled down my window as the large man approached my car. He leaned down and looked at me. License and registration, please. Oh, fuck. It's Marcus. He probably orchestrated this. He was like, oh no, you gotta take me to work, CC. That fucking sucks. And then he was like, hey, Marcus, she's dropping me off. She takes this way home. You're free and clear. Where's my money, bitch? That familiar voice rattled my brain. Marcus? I stuttered out, freezing with my hand hovering over my ID. License and registration. Fuck off. Marcus repeated more firmly and insistently this time. This wasn't a social call. He was serious. Sure. Sure, we'll, we'll all pretend as if this was a serendipitous encounter. I pulled out my license and the registration for my car. My hands were shaking as I handed them over to him. Marcus took my papers and my license and walked away without another word. What was he doing? Couldn't stop the hurricane of thoughts. I gripped my steering wheel, tempted to drive off, but that would just give him reason to follow me and I'd only get in even more trouble. Why was he harassing me right now? I could hear a loud bang as he slammed his hands on the frame of my car, snapping me out of my panicked state. So unnecessary. Well, I'm not gonna do that, so. I didn't know you were a traffic cop now. He acted like he didn't hear me. Do you know why I pulled you over? Probably because you're a dick. Because you're an asshole. You ran the stop sign. I couldn't believe my ears. He pulled me over for some stupid shit like that? I can't believe you. I grumbled as he held out my license and papers. I'm not giving you a ticket this time. Oh, how kind of you. What a white knight. Have a good day. Suck my ass. Okay, okay, I, I, I like her. She's got spunk. I was half tempted to get out of my car and scream in his face. Make him feel like more of an asshole, but it wasn't worth it. I don't think he feels even the least bit like he's an asshole. He's probably laughing at the fact that he rattled us so much. He just seems like that kind of dick. I didn't want another confrontation. I just watched him drive off. I looked at my phone and picked it up. I was still shaking as I rang John. Hey. Hey, what's wrong? What's going on? His tone was noticeably panicked. Prob it seems like he's having some regrets for selling me out to this fucking dickhead man. I couldn't quite get the words out. John seemed to understand anyway. Of course he did. Of course he did. Of course he knew exactly what was going on. He fucking orchestrated it. Go home. If you're not home, go home. I'll meet you there. How are you going to meet me there? You have no car. Don't worry, I'll be there soon. How? He spoke quickly into the receiver. I hung up the phone and drove my way home, being especially careful of the signs this time. I dragged myself out of my car and into the house. I laid face first into the bed as my cat jumped on my back. She pawed at the back of my head. I didn't feel like moving. I just wanted to wait until John got back home so I could relax. I could hear the door opening and John put his hand on my head. John. I reached up and hugged him hard. He wrapped his arms around me and squeezed me tight. He didn't have to say anything. I just knew he was there for me. 
I rubbed my face into his shoulder and cried. I didn't know what else to do. Seeing Marcus stressed me out to no end and I couldn't, I couldn't focus. You're all right, I'm here for you, I'm sure. I knew. I could feel it deep down. John meant every word he said, until he doesn't. He was always there. I love you. I cried into his shoulder. John hugged me as tight as he could. His warm arms, his smell, everything about him made me feel safe. I love you too. I rubbed my face into him and we didn't talk anymore. He laid in bed with me until I stopped shaking, his thick fingers running through my hair. I opened my eyes and saw John's concerned face looking down at me. I'm okay, I was just... I bit my lip, unsure if I wanted to continue. Hey, you don't have to say anything. I get it. Can we have a movie night? John nodded and put his hand on my back. Play with Munchie. I'll be right back. I'll get dinner. I picked up my cat. She turned into butter in my arms as I moved on into the couch area. I rubbed my cat's paws as she just purred happily. I wasn't sure how much time passed by as I played with her, but I looked up and saw John opening the door. Munchie took off to the bedroom to hide under the bed like she always did. There is a very suspicious amount of space here. Like a Marcus amount of space. Is this is this the point where fucking I the, the handoff happens, this exchange? I waved at him and smiled, but it was short-lived as my eyes widened. Ah, uh, see there wait. Wait, is he gonna stab John? Marcus's eyes met mine. My heart stopped. I screamed at John to move, but it was too late. Oh shit, he stabbed John. He stabbed John? Was he not in cahoots with Marcus? Or, or Marcus decided he didn't want to pay John. Marcus pushed his knife into John's back. John let out a blood-curling scream and Marcus twisted the knife, wrenching the blade out as fast as he could and tearing through John's flesh. He dropped him unceremoniously to the floor. How unlucky. Marcus grabbed John's hair and whispered, I missed your vitals. You get to bleed out. I got up to charge at Marcus, but he held up a stun gun and tased me. Don't tase me, bro. I could feel all my limbs go limp as the shock reverberated through my body. I fell to the ground near John, trying to stay awake. Okay, so I'm suspicious. I'm very suspicious. But is she suspicious? It doesn't seem like she is. She probably would do this one, so let's go ahead. Please let John go. No, don't. Let CC go. Mm, having a change of heart there, John. Marcus didn't seem like he heard John's begging. You want to save your little boyfriend's life? Marcus grabbed the back of John's head, smashing it violently into the floor. This piece of garbage. Oh, look at his face, though. The words punctuated by the sound of John's nose crunching, blood spattering around his head. Of course you want to save his life. Marcus held John up so I could see what he'd done to him. His face was a bruised and bloody mess. Marcus dropped John's head and looked at me. But I couldn't give less of a fuck about him. Marcus grabbed his handcuffs and slapped them over my wrists. You're coming with me. John looked up and shook his head, fingers scrabbling over the floor as he tried to get up. No, you can't do this. Is he in cahoots with Marcus? I 
can't, I can't tell. But also, I don't trust a single man in any of these series, so. <laughs> Marcus hauled me up on his shoulder. He pushed his heel into John's gaping wound. John let out a cry of agony that tore at my heart. I can do whatever I want. Ugh. Ugh. Please stop. I begged, tears streaming down my face. I'll do whatever you want, just don't hurt him anymore. Marcus looked at me and lifted his shoe off of John's back. You'll do whatever I want either way. Marcus pulled out his gun. But first, no witnesses. Oh no! The sound was deafening and yet it seemed so far away. If John was truly innocent in all of this, I'm going to be very sad. <laughs> but if he had a hand in this bullshittery, good riddance. I guess we'll see. I felt cold and paralyzed. Absently, I was aware of being moved, but it all just seemed like a nightmare. I felt my body hit the ground and looked around in a panic. What was happening now? I looked up at Marcus and he grabbed my face gently, then harder. His fingers dug into my skin, forcing me to meet his gaze. Why would you leave me for him? Yeah, let's analyze that. Why could I have possibly left this perfectly well-adjusted hunk of man for somebody who doesn't put fucking bars on the doors? That's a tough one. He growled as he squeezed my face. I opened my mouth to speak. He clapped his hand over my mouth and pushed me against the wall. No, don't answer that question. You're gonna stay here with me. Marcus laid me down on the bed. I started to shake. What did he want from me? I knew he was obsessive, but he was a police officer. I feel like if anything that feeds into the he's a dickhead narrative. How could he do this? Uh, let me go, bitch. Why would I do that? The look in his eyes told me he wasn't completely stable. Yeah, it's definitely the look in his eyes. And not the fact that he came in, shot my boyfriend to death, kidnapped me, threw me in a room with bars on the door. It took me a long time to find you. You hid away from me and I couldn't handle that. I didn't want you to go. You don't understand how happy I was when I saw your car. I just had to watch you slip up. He brushed his fingers over my cheek gently. Or not, you were always a good driver. <laughs> couldn't be me. I just had to put on the siren to make you pull over for me. Marcus licked his lips as I squirmed underneath him. I knew he was a control freak, but I didn't realize how bad it was. Marcus looked at his hands. They were still covered in John's blood and everything that happened came rushing back to me. He killed my boyfriend to get to me. I tried to get away, but he grabbed my hips, raking his nails on my sides. Hey, where do you think you're going? He barked as he pulled me closer. Uh-oh. You killed John. Get off. I screamed. He pushed my legs open, positioned himself between them. Uh-oh. I think I will. Oh, no. So it begins. His voice was low, dangerous. He pulled a knife from his pocket, and I stared at it. It was the same knife he used to kill John with. The blood. I froze at the sight of it, and he tore through my clothes, scratching my skin as he went, enough to make me bleed. It's an easier way to do that. You don't, you don't have to use a knife, my guy. I winced and tried not to struggle. I just wanted to get away from him. I could feel my clothes hit the floor in tatters. I was completely exposed to him. Yikes. He's, uh, doing some things, and she just says, I would not moan. This was not turning me on. 
I love how all of the MCs have a really stable frame of mind. It's great. I reprimanded my brain. You stop it, brain. This man who has been stalking me and came in and shot my boyfriend to death and kidnapped me and locked me in this room and is now doing things against my consent. This isn't, this isn't sexy. Get it together. You're going to stay here as long as it takes. I'll make you mine again. He walked out of the room. The door shut behind him. I could hear the latches close me in. I curled up in a ball and cried. I looked up when I heard the door unlatching. The metal door swung open as Marcus put a box on the dresser. I rolled over in bed and tried to scramble to the furthest corner of the room as he approached me. He put his hands on my face and leaned in. It pains me to see you so afraid of me. I'm sure it does. His thumb stroking my cheeks. Yes. I reeled my arm back and slapped Marcus across the face as hard as I could. He leaned in and kissed me on the mouth. Of course he fucking did. That wasn't what I was expecting. I grabbed the back of his head and tried to pry him off me, but that just made him come closer. He grabbed my hips and pinned me to the ground. I bit down on his bottom lip. He pulled away slowly and licked the blood off his bottom lip. He smiled at me and I couldn't help but feel disgusted by his smile. He was enjoying this. Honestly, though, he wanted me to fight back. Yeah, he wants me to fight back until he's like, yeah, this is taking too long and you're not doing what I want you to do, so. And then he just like, and throws me out in the backyard. <laughs> he walked off to grab the box on the table. Marcus opened the box and it was full of food. He looked at it and then at me. Time to eat. I shrunk back. I wasn't sure what was in the food, but I didn't want him feeding me. His eyes were locked on me and I wasn't sure what to do. Nah, fuck your food. You probably put something in it. Nah. I screeched as Marcus grabbed my head. He pulled out a fork and pinched my nose shut. You'll eat. You don't have a choice. I was going to listen to him whether I liked it or not. I gasped for air and Marcus pushed the food into my mouth. It tasted like ash as I swallowed it. I didn't want to eat. I didn't want to be here. Marcus continued to shove forkful after forkful of food into my mouth. I watched him as he force fed me. His expression was hard to read. I could feel myself getting dizzy, seeing he absolutely put something in it. Marcus put his hand on my head as I hit the ground near the food box. He looked at the fork and tossed it into the empty box. I didn't want to have to do that. You should just listen to me next time. Marcus picked himself off the ground and pushed his heel into my sternum. He dug it in, the pain... He dug it in, the pressure painful and nauseating, making me want to throw up. I couldn't see straight and his foot was making it worse. I gripped at it weakly and kept my eyes on him. You should clean up in the bathroom. It's right there. He pointed at the door without a metal gate on it. I gripped his shoe and he pushed hard into me again. I wouldn't take too long if I were you. He finally lifted his weight off of me. I rested my head on the floor for a moment. I just need a few minutes to make sure the dizzy feeling fell away from me. I couldn't stand up. I didn't know what was in that food, but I couldn't move or think. I closed my eyes and passed out. I woke up the next day and I couldn't hear Marcus moving around. He was either at work or sleeping in. I remember the days when we lived together and he would sleep in pretty late on his days off. That would give me an opportunity to take a look around. I rubbed my hands together and smiled. Okay, um, let's see if we can figure out anything about this camera, maybe? I climbed on the dresser and looked at the security camera. It was just one of those simple ones you were supposed to put outside of your home. He was watching me. I wondered if he was watching me right now. I poked the camera and I could hear the sounds of it readjusting and looking at me. Hey! I squeaked as I fell off the dresser. I rubbed the back of my head and looked at it. Jerk. 
she mad at the camera? If he wasn't looking at me, maybe it was just realigning itself, but it still scared me. It was absolutely just refocusing. It felt like a couple of hours before I could hear Marcus moving around the house, clanking pots, making coffee. I got up and put my ear to the wall. I could hear him moving around and coming closer. I scurried back towards the bed and sat down as he unlatched the outer door and walked in. You haven't given up yet? Marcus didn't say anything. He just slowly walked over to me. Marcus. I couldn't help but stammer out as he sat on the bed. We're going to play a little game. I don't like that. Marcus rested his hand on my thigh. His touch slid up my legs and I flinched. He leaned over me and nuzzled against my neck, kissing my skin and running his hand over my sides. Ugh. I laid back, oh no, in bed and watched him work. Why? No, why? I tensed up and clenched my hands. Put your hands above your head. Get wrecked, he growled into my throat. Fuck you. No. No. I screamed. He grabbed my wrists and held me down anyways. He put his hand over my mouth and leaned into me. I got a little bit of sanity back. Did you see that? It was an order. You're not, you're not the boss of me. Marcus smoothed his fingers across my body, carefully stroking near my erogenous zones. Mmm, sexy. I twisted in my spot as he teased me. You're not going to say no to me anymore. Fucking watch me. Marcus pushed his fingers into my flesh. I let out a soft cry. It hurt. He squeezed me hard. Marcus gripped my face and looked at me. Why did you leave me? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know, you're such a catch. <laughs> Couldn't you see that I love you more than anything? Marcus cooed as he rubbed my cheeks. Tell me you're sorry and I'll go easier on you. What? I... Do it. There was a dangerous edge to the words. He was unstable. I tried to turn my head but his hands kept my face in place. Oh, yikes. I'm not going to apologize to this dick face. Get fucked. No way. Fuck you. He grabbed my hair and pulled it hard. I could feel him ripping some of it out of my scalp and my eyes burned with tears. Say it. I didn't do anything wrong. No, he demanded. I bit my bottom lip and tried to shake my head as much as I could. He punched me in the face and I felt blood pour out of my nose. And yet he loves me so much. Say it. Now. Oh, he's getting angrier and angrier at me. This is the the love chart, by the way. So this one means he loves you the most, and this means he loves you the least. And we are here. He growled as I let out a small cry. I have nothing to apologize for. Damn right. I hiss between my teeth. Yikes. Fine, you don't have to say it now. I'll just have to break you down. Oh no. Oh no, I don't... Can we just stay here with the clothes on? <laughs> I will not... Not be doing that. <laughs> Thanks. Fuck off. He um, is asking me... Who has the best Oscar Mayer wiener in the world? And I'm gonna tell him to fuck himself. <laughs> hey, my sanity keeps going up. Marcus looked at me and got up. He pulled a knife from the pocket of his jeans. He looked at the blade and then at me. My eyes shot open. I wasn't sure what he was going to do with it, but he didn't look like he was playing around. He grabbed my leg and kneeled down on my shin. You little shit. You don't even understand what position you're in, do you? Marcus licked the blade. He made a pleased sound and looked at me. Mmm, tastes like a knife. You're lucky I didn't just kill you with that little boyfriend of yours. It probably would have been better if he had. Honestly, like... He leaned into me and gripped my chin. I thought about it. He latched down on my skin. Did he bite me? 
but I want you. He dragged the sharp tip of the knife down my leg idly, watching me carefully for a reaction. I didn't dare kick my legs, not with a knife that close to my skin. And you are mine. He brought the blade up. He started to slice my leg. The bite of the knife was painful as it shot through my core. He was cutting me. He was cutting hard and deep. I screamed as he put his free hand over my mouth and carved deep into my flesh. I could feel my head floating as he sliced into me. I watched on in horror as he jaggedly carved his name into my skin. <sighs> this guy's such a douche. Like, he just goes beyond, like, awful. And he's just, like, douchebag awful. Like, ugh. I watched him press one of my blankets on the wound and I hissed in pain. He was bleeding pretty badly as he pushed down. A smile graced his lips as he looked at me. He leaned over me and peeled my blanket back, showing me my new wounds. My new scars. In case you forget who you belong to, kitten. Ugh, I hate the, I hate the pet names. I hate it. I hate it. Ugh, ugh, don't call me that. He licked his knife again. My, my blood stained his lips. I couldn't speak or scream or move. I didn't know what else to say as he uncuffed me. I was just feeling faint. I woke up the next morning feeling the aches and pains from the other day all over me. I put my hand on my head and watched Marcus open the door to the room. I looked at him and walked over. My hands wrapped around the bars and he snorted. Looks like you're not completely tamed yet. Is this it? Is this when he's going to bludgeon me? Put me out of my damn misery. Look, like his heart's going down. We're like halfway. We're at the halfway mark. I think this is time where he calls it a day. Maybe he can swap me out with his lawyer. He opened the door. I tried to run, but he grabbed my hair and yanked me to the ground. Marcus quickly put a collar around my neck. It had prongs on the inside. Is this a shock collar? God damn it. He had locked it into place and I stared at him, eyes wide in disbelief. Look at you, you look like a wild animal. He pressed a button on a remote, sending a shock wave of electricity through my body. You need to be tamed. I twisted on the floor in pain. He put his foot on my chest. I'll take as long as I need to. He left the room and came back with a food bowl, setting it on the ground. Marcus kicked it over to me and I looked at it. Cat food. I could tell by the smell. Eat up. Fuck you. He pulled the bars closed. He stood there waiting, watching me stare at the food. My stomach turned. Marcus gently placed a bowl of fresh salmon near my door. Just looking at it made my stomach rumble, but I saw a familiar face. Is it John? Is he alive? Oh, it's Munchie. Hey, you little fucking traitor. Look at you, rubbing all over his face. That's why I don't like cats. Cats have no loyalty. They'll just go to whoever fucking feeds them. No, no. That's why I have dogs. I can work mirrors. It's fine. Three dogs, because if I were kidnapped, and some guy was like fucking trying to murder me, this little shithead would like try to eat his face off. This little shithead though, he would not do anything. He would just be like, oh look a person, let me give him kisses. Rotten. She rubbed her body against Marcus's leg and Marcus scratched gently behind her ear. Who's a sweet kitty? Marcus cooed and Munchie let out a small meow. Marcus turned his eyes toward me. Once you learn your place, you won't be eating dime store cat food off the floor. He shut the door to my room with a loud bang. That's it? That's the end? You didn't... I was not expecting a survival ending. I thought he would have murdered my face off. Hmm. I mean, it's not great. <laughs> I survived, but I'm also still there. But interesting. 
Okay, so the last run through, I was super insubordinate, super in his face, super get wrecked, get out of my life. And I lived, which was very surprising to me, very shocking. So I'm thinking maybe if we're timid little sad babies, maybe he'll be like, ugh, there's no challenge to this, you suck. And then will try to take me out. Or I can like try to overpass, like gain, gain his trust. And he'll be like, oh wow, you love me. You can come out of the room. And then first chance I get, I'm Audi 5000. So I'll just apologize. Sorry, bro, for not doing anything wrong. But <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't apologize to me for this. You know why I pulled you over? Because you're a fucking psycho. I shook my head and looked up at him. He pulled his sunglasses off and leaned against my car door. Oh, no sunglasses. You ran the stop sign. I'm not gonna give you a ticket this time. You should be more careful. I nodded my head quickly and he handed me my license and registration. I rubbed my hand gently against his and his bottom lip thinned as he chewed on it. Why did I do that? Literally had a nightmare about seeing this man this morning. And then I actually see this man and I'm what, flirting with him? Okay, so much for his poker face. Thank you, sir. Ugh. Marcus's face didn't give away what he was thinking this time. Have a good day. He put his sunglasses back on. You too, officer. Why? 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 Why is she leaning, leaning into this so much? Why is she flirting with the man of her nightmares? Was that a smile? I sheepishly closed the window. I looked at my phone and picked it up. I was still shaking as I rang John. Wait, but I'm still upset? How am I still upset? I actively flirted with the man. I made active choices to flirt with this man and then I'm gonna call my boyfriend and be like oh my god my ex-husband showed up and oh my god I don't know I don't know I've never been in that position maybe that's a thing I don't know if it is let me know because right now I am judging hardcore and if that's a thing I will take it back I'll, I'll, I'll apologize but like I am very confused <laughs> all right John so we already flirted with this guy and we tried to beg for his life and it just pissed him off so maybe we beg for our own life Let's see what happens please let me go i curled up trying to get to my feet marcus abandoned john and touched my face i don't want to let you go marcus grabbed his handcuffs and slapped them over my wrists you're coming with me John looked up and shook his head, fingers scrabbling over the floor as he tried to get up. Well, at least he didn't bash his face in. No, you can't do this. Marcus hauled me up on his shoulder. Okay, so he's... It's all the same stuff. He still shot him. Okay, so I guess... Not questioning. Not being obstinate. Just... I'm just a sad, helpless, little, incompetent baby, and maybe you'll get sick of me being so disgusting and <laughs> let me go. Marcus? I could feel tears welling up at the corners of my eyes. I wasn't even sure what to say to him. What could I say? What is it? I love that cute little tone you take when you say my name. He was practically moaning when he said it. Ugh. I tried to move, but he held my head down and kissed my neck. I shuddered and whimpered as he started to suck on my skin. 
What is he, fucking 12? Is he giving me a goddamn hickey? Who over the age of like 16 gives people hickeys? Fucking, he's like a douchebag frat guy. Carvin is naming me, giving me hickeys. I wiggled to get away, but he was stronger than me. He held me in place and I felt his lips leave me. That's a better look for you. I knew he left a giant hickey on my neck. Marcus looked at his hands. Yeah, there's, okay. Of these two options, I feel like the more meek of the two would be this one. Because yelling at him probably wouldn't be. You know what I mean? I pushed his hands away from me and looked at his empty palm. I had nothing to say to him. He seemed unperturbed. He put his hands on my face and pushed his thumb into my mouth. Ew. I bit down on his finger and he blushed. Ew. I looked on in horror as he pulled his hands from my face and licked the blood off his thumb. You're so pretty when you're feisty. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, I don't like it either. I would leave too. He got up to get what was on the table. Marcus opened the box and it was full of food. Yep. I guess I'll eat it this time. I looked at the box as he held out a spoon for me. Here. Reluctantly, I took it from him. I wasn't sure if I should thank him or not. I looked down at the food with apprehension. He was always a good cook. I bit my lip, feeling his eyes watching my every move. I could ask him if he was going to eat with me, have him taste the food first, but he didn't look like he wanted to kill me. How do you look like you're going to kill someone? Like he already has you locked in a room. He's beaten you. He's done other horrible things to you, but like, he obviously looks like he draws the line at killing. I mean, he did kill my boyfriends, but like me, it's fine. I shoveled some of the rice onto my spoon and started to eat slowly. It was like it had been before when we were married. He cooked for me and I loved it. I could feel tears burning at the corners of my eyes. Don't worry, my love. I won't hurt you. I won't hurt you? I won't hurt you, he says. I won't hurt you. Okay, Marcus. That's absolutely a truth, a true statement you just said to me. Awesome. He rubbed my cheek, wiping my tears away. It was a lie. I knew it by the look on his face, and also the state of our body at this point. He'd hurt me. He'd do anything to keep me here. But I just kept eating and kept my mouth shut. He watched me eat until I was all done with the food. He picked up the box and put his hand on my head once again. You should clean up. There's a bathroom right there. Don't take too long now. It wasn't a suggestion. It was a threat. I rested my head on the floor for a moment. I just need a few minutes to make sure the dizzy feeling fell away from me. Alright, I guess we'll go to the bathroom or whatever. I got up and walked into the bathroom. Well, he wanted me to clean up. I looked at the camera in the corner. He must have been watching me. Well, I will absolutely not be doing that one. Okay, as much as I really want to look around this bathroom, I feel like the... See, because the thing is, the most obedient option would be to take a shower, and that's the one that I don't want to do the most. <laughs> like, I really want to do some middle ground, but... This would make more sense with the choices we've made so far. I don't want to, because you know he's going to come in. You know he's going to come in and do some unspeakable shit. And I just don't, I don't. Mm. All right. I opened the shower door and started the water. If I was going to get clean, I might as well clean everything. I stepped inside and started to wash the blood off my body. I closed my eyes as the warm water hit my skin. There he is. See, I told you, I told you, I told you. Fucking called it, I knew. The second we got in that shower and he saw we were in the shower, is fucking game over. I heard the door opening and I looked over to find Marcus had barged in. He looked, he looked a little flushed. What's wrong now? Yep. 
Yep. I'm being so sassy, by the way, which is very surprising to me. <laughs> like, she talks about how he smells like alcohol and asks, taking up drinking again? I guess whiskey dick doesn't apply, she says. Then he says, I'm going to take what I want. And she replies, like you weren't going to anyways. <laughs> Girlfriend. <laughs> Love it. And there it is. Again, she's just like, oh, this is actually kind of nice. <laughs> Sorry, this is... I stuck out my tongue and felt my eyes rolling back in my head. What? He wrapped a towel around my body and placed me in bed. He sat at the edge of the bed and I traced my fingers on his back. I felt ashamed that I just had relations with that murderer and that I liked it, but... Marcus, I whispered. Marcus placed his hand on my head and caressed my hair until I fell asleep. I woke up the next day, but I couldn't hear mo Marcus moving around. Okay, so... So we didn't look around the bathroom. We just got in the shower, which was a fucking mistake, and I knew it was going to be a mistake. So I guess this time we'll look through the bathroom. I looked at the door to the bathroom and headed back inside. If Marcus was sleeping, I could do whatever I wanted in here, right? I looked in the medicine cabinet. Nothing. I could try to break something and use a piece of the plastic like a shank. But how much noise did I really want to make? He was a cop. He could just disarm me and... No. I didn't want to think about that. So I wasn't going to. I put a hand on the metal toilet, just like in prison, and then looked at the shower curtain. He really was ready for me to try anything, wasn't he? I tugged at the plastic and sighed. There wasn't anything I could do with this. I headed back into my room and took a seat on the bed again. It felt like a couple of hours before I could hear Marcus moving around the house, clanking pots, making coffee. I got up and put my ear to the wall. I could hear him moving around and coming closer. I scurried back towards the bed and sat down as he unlatched the outer door and walked in. So I guess we, like, care about his well-being now or whatever. I don't know why I was concerned for him. Maybe I just wanted him to know I was thinking about him. Disgusting. That couldn't hurt in this situation, could it? Hmm? Yeah, maybe. Marcus came closer to me. Marcus. I couldn't help but stammer as he sat on the bed. We're going to play a little game. Oh, right, yeah. I don't like the game when these are the rules. <laughs> Guess I'll just do it. I slowly raised my hands above my head and he pulled out handcuffs. I looked at them as he locked my wrists to the bed. I whimpered as he ran his fingers over my face to my lips. Such a sweet kitten. Yep, yeah, I mean, he's just gross. He felt so good. Oh, ugh. Awful. I hate, I hate, hate making these choices. I hate it. I arched my back against his hands and whimpered again. Disgusting. Marcus gripped my face and looked at me. Why did you leave me? Couldn't you see that I love you more than anything? I mean, honestly, at this point, it's like, I am very obviously into this shit. And this is the kind of person that I want to be around. So why would I have left him in the first place? Like... If this is what I'm into, I'm immediately like, hey, this is awesome. Let's do this. Why did I even go? Marcus cooed as he rubbed my cheeks. Tell me you're sorry, and I'll go easier on you. I guess I'll do it. Ugh. I'm sorry, Marcus. He brightened up a little, but kept his hands on my face. Nope. He growled deep in his chest, and I felt the vibrations of the sound everywhere we were touching. He growled? He growled. 
grown fucking men. Supposedly. I squeaked and he grabbed my face. Say it again like you mean it. But I don't mean it. I gripped the handcuffs, twisting around and rubbing up against him. I mean it. I'm sorry, Marcus. Please forgive me. He pushed his thumb into my mouth and I licked it submissively. I do not like the vibe we've created in the studio today. That's better. Marcus watched my tongue flick over his finger. Oop. Now he's naked. I don't want to. I don't want to. No, 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 no. I'm about to go fucking insane. <laughs> Let's see if I have a mental breakdown and then I can stab him in the neck. Okay, so he, I have gone fully insane. He's carving his name into my leg, except he made me beg to do it. And of course, I am just all fucking in at this point. I'm just like, fuck yes do that. That sounds like a wonderful idea. <sighs> I let out a pained moan and watched him carve into my skin, slowly pulling away just the top layer. I tried not to move around too much, but it was painful. And despite everything, I couldn't help but feel myself getting hot and uncomfortably aroused. Again, why, why even leave in the first place if this is the kind of thing that I'm into? Like... Yikes. Yikes. He watched the blood pour out of my wounds. I nodded as he put his hand- Oh, no, yikes, yikes, yikes. I wanted him to inflict pain on me while he touched me. to listen to my master, she says. This was unprompted, unbidden. Nowhere was he like, I'm your master now, you better call me master. No, that's just, that's just what I've decided was happening now. I made that choice and I feel great about it. Stay with me, master, I said. And I went to bed. I felt Marcus in my arms the next morning and I leaned over him. Good morning, handsome. I kissed his lips. He opened his eyes and looked over at me. Marcus put his hand on my cheek and I blushed. Cute. I have something for you. He got up. Give me one second. Is it gonna be his Richard Nixon? Cause that seems to be the only thing he has to offer. Marcus left the room and I sat down, pouting a bit at him leaving. After what felt like a long time, he finally returned with a small animal carrier. Oh, is it Munchie? What's that? I asked softly as he opened the carrier. A tiny cat slunk out of the box and rubbed herself on Marcus's leg. Munchie. If you're going to stay with me, I thought you'd want her around. What do you mean, if? What do you mean, if I s I'm going to stay with you? I don't have a choice. My face brightened up. This was the cat he rescued from under a car engine. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you. I squeaked happily as our cat jumped on the bed, licking my toes. He leaned into me and pull pulled a collar around my neck. Is it the shock collar again? You were so good. I wanted to give you something special. I wanted to give you something special. I looked at him with a smile and hugged him. He was so good to me. Marcus gave you something special. 
So was this just a normal collar or was that the shock collar? I'm assuming it was just the normal collar. And also, again, he did not murder my face off, which is very surprising to me. <laughs> okay, so that is all the time I have for fucking Marcus. But I think next time around I'm gonna try a middle path and then just kind of see what shenanigans I can get into and how many endings there are. But I will see you then. Let it in.